In this video, we're going to calculate the energy levels of a magnetic dipole interacting with a magnetic field and how the transitions between these energy levels lead to the phenomenon of nuclear magnetic resonance. So from previous videos, we have our magnetic dipole here, which is equal to, uh, when defined as an operator, we derive that that's equal to a proportionality constant time called the nuclear factor times the charge of the nucleus divided by 2 times the mass of the nucleus times our total nuclear spin angular momentum operator I. And then this is equal to <clears throat> G times the also times the uh, nuclear magneton, which is Q over 2m, and that's also equal to gamma, which is Gn times beta n, called the magnetogyric ratio. Okay, so we've got this uh, magnetic moment here, this magnetic dipole, and the potential energy of a magnetic dipole interacting with a magnetic field is going to equal the negative dot product of the magnetic dipole mu and the magnetic field B. Now for the rest of this video, we're going to assume that the magnetic field exists only in the B direction, which is a choice that we are free to make in quantum mechanics like that. We're free to kind of pick an axis like that. So we have take that B is only in the Z direction. So our magnetic field B is just equal to its Z component times the Z direction. Okay, so that means that our interaction of our magnetic dipole and our magnetic field is just going to equal negative the z component of our magnetic dipole times the z component of our magnetic field, which is our entire magnetic field as we have defined it here. Okay, and then if we look at this in terms of operators, so let's say Let's define this in terms of our operators. So this would be minus BZ times the operator for mu Z, which would be equal to gamma, no, which would be equal to, yep, yeah, which would be equal to minus gamma beta Z times the IZ operator. Okay, so we went from mu to gamma I, from mu to gamma I, and it's just in the Z component, so we went from mu Z to gamma IZ, and the minus BZ minus Z component of the magnetic field hung around for the ride. So this is our potential energy operator for a magnetic field interacting with the nuclear spin of our nucleus. So we can define now a Hamiltonian for this system. So our Hamiltonian operator is just going to be, well there's no change to our kinetic energy, so it's just our potential energy that's changing. So this is going to be minus gamma times z component of magnetic field times our operator iz. Okay, so we can now define a Schrodinger equation for this system. We know that h psi is equal to e psi. And we're going to assume that our wave function here is either the spin up or spin down state, alpha or beta. So that means it's an, it is an eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian that we have here because these alpha and beta states are eigenfunctions of iz. And the Hamiltonian is just iz times a constant. So we're going to have, if we include all of our uh, factors in there, it's going to be minus h bar comes from there, gamma comes from there, m sub i, which is either going to be plus one half or minus one half coming from there, times bz, times psi. So our energy eigenvalue here is going to be minus h bar gamma bz times plus or minus one half depending on whether we are in the alpha or the beta state. 
So let's plot that out over here. So we're going to have our energy plotted here, and it's going to be plotted in units of h bar gamma bz. Let's do that in a color other than white. It kind of doesn't stick out there. All right, so we've got our energy. Our energy is in units of h bar gamma and bz. All right, <clears throat> so we have got a zero right there. We've got minus one half right there, and we've got plus one half right there. Okay, so where do our states fall here on our graphed spectrum? So we have for alpha, its eigenvalue was plus one half, so stick in plus one half here, multiply that times the minus, you get minus one half h bar gamma bz for your energy. So minus one half h bar gamma bz is our alpha state, spin up. So alpha or spin up. Similarly for b, we have minus one half, so plug in minus one half there, times the minus one gives us plus one half h bar gamma bz for our energy. Plot that up there. That's beta or spin down. So our spin up is the low energy state, our spin down is the high energy state as we have defined our magnetic field to be only along the plus z direction. So now what's the transition energy between these two states? If, if we want to have a transition between these two states, we need to hit it with a photon of exactly that energy. So delta E, which is going to be equal to h times the nu, h times the frequency of the photon, Planck's constant times that, is equal to the energy of E of our final state minus our initial state, so E of minus one half times E minus E of plus one half, which is equal to, we have spin down, which is at plus one half minus spin up, which is at minus one half. And that energy is a graph in units of h bar gamma bz. Okay, so we have all of that. So let's do some simplification here. We're going to have that h nu is equal to one half minus minus one half is equal to one. So this is going to be h bar gamma bz. So that means, simplifying here, we have h bar is h over 2 pi. So h over 2 pi divided by h is just going to be, uh, it's just going to be two, 1 over 2 pi. So that h bar and that h are going to cancel. We are just going to get gamma bz over 2 pi. So this is the frequency of a photon that we need to hit our nucleus with in order for it to undergo a transition from the high, from the spin up to the spin down state. And if we have a bunch of, uh, if we have a bunch of protons and they are all have this same set of energy levels, then having some type of photon hit it at this, at this frequency is going to give us that type of a that type of a transition and we'll be able to record the frequency at which that transition occurs. Now this is the basic principle of what kind of energy transition occurs in nuclear magnetic resonance because our nuclei are interacting with a magnetic field and we can either create the magnetic field or create the photon frequency such that this condition is met and you have a bunch of these protons transferring between these energy levels here. The only other thing I want to mention is that this new here this is in, if you have it in units of hertz. You could also have it in units of radians per second if you multiply it by that two pi in terms of omega. But we have it here in terms of nu, which is graphed in units of hertz. Yep. And we have this gamma here, which we will remind ourselves is dependent on a nuclear factor. 
a constant that is de nucleus dependent and our nuclear magneton beta, which depends on the charge of the nucleus divided by two times its mass.